Um, so thank you so much for coming. Good evening and welcome to this case study client campaign presentation for the PR industry's newest professionals. I'm Dr. Kay Sweetser and I'm the director of the Glenn M. Broom Center for Professional Development and Public Relations. The Broom Center is named after a much loved educator who is considered the professor of the profession because he literally wrote the textbook that sits on nearly every practitioner's desk. Um, so as we get started here, I'd really like to thank the um, nearly 100 people who have signed on to Zoom tonight. Uh, notably, we have the Public Relations Society of America, San Diego, Imperial County's chapter who co-promoted the event with us. Uh, we have Dr. Betty Broom, who founded this center with her husband. We have um, Scott Pansky and Tom Gable, who are founding donors to the Broom Center. Uh, Dr. Noah Arsenault, our school director. We have Dr. Stephen Weber, the president emeritus of SDSU. What an honor to have you here. And we have so many familiar faces that I'm seeing coming in, alumni, San Diego um, PR practitioners, and of course, all of the loved ones of our brand new PR pros. I'm so happy that you could make it here. Tonight is a very special night for me, and I really look forward to these campaign presentations every single semester. This is a celebration for these new professionals. This is pretty much their Super Bowl. They are all winners tonight. In the senior capstone course, we ask our PR majors to put everything in the JMS curriculum together. They do PR writing, they do research, ethics, and this is their one chance before they walk out the door for them to show us that they're ready. So I think tonight you're gonna see they're ready. I'm gonna ask that everybody keep your mics on mute during the presentation. It's gonna last about 15 or so minutes. Then we're gonna open it up to everyone for questions. Um, tonight we have uh, the team that represented the Broom Center and as a part of their campaign, they hosted the third annual Allen H. Center Distinguished Lecture in Public Relations. And so now I'm going to turn it on over to the team for their professional view. Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us this evening. We wish that we could all be in person, but we're so glad to have you here via Zoom. My name is Alexis Hopper and I have the honor of being the team lead for this semester's JMS 585 campaign team. Dr. Glenn M. Broom had a vision of making the profession better by making you your best professional. Today, we represent the goal of that, the Glenn M. Broom Center for Professional Development and Public Relations. Dr. Broom was a professor of the profession, mentor, author of effective public relations, husband, friend, the list goes on. He believed that you had no choice but to tell the truth in the matter. The Broom Center, established in 2012, is dedicated to the community by urging San Diego State faculty to further the profession through public relations research and dedicating the time and investing time into projects that Dr. Glenn M. Broom believed in. Some of the opportunities that the Glen M. Broom Center provide are funding PR student campaigns like our own, aiding junior faculty research through grants, and developing professional development activities for practitioners, and the annual Allen H. Center Distinguished Lecture in Public Relations. Allen Center, namesake of the lecture series, was a longtime friend of SDSU and mentor to Dr. Glen M. Broom. He co-authored Cutlip and Center's Effective Public Relations, which is considered the definitive PR textbook in academics. Broom and Center had a very unique relationship. As Center was Broom's mentor, and as Center retired, and Dr. Broom became the journalism chair of San Diego State University and hired on Center, there was this very unique mentoring, wonderful full circle. Mentoring, creating professional relationships, and pushing the status quo are all important missions of the Broom Center. Mary Corrie Moreno, who is a student and friend of Dr. Broom, said Dr. Broom was someone who I could turn to if I ever needed anything. There was no doubt he was an influential academic in the field of public relations and a mentor to many. 
Honoring the mentorship between Dr. Broom and Center, the Center Lecture developed in 2018, the first Center Lecture to discuss relevant topics within the media. And this, this semester, the Broom Center team hosted its third annual Allen H. Center Distinguished Lecture in Public Relations with keynote speaker, CNN analyst, John Kirby. Hi everyone, my name is Natalie Smith and I'm the research co-lead. I'm really excited to share with you guys the groundwork for this entire campaign. To create such a strategic and successful event, we really relied on research to be our guiding light. It was imperative that we had a strong foundation of data to lay the path for our goals and objectives. To do this, we conducted both qualitative and quantitative research to ensure we were getting as much information from our target audience as possible. From our target audience that we determined to be media professionals in Southern California, we wanted to measure their knowledge of Dr. Glenn M. Broom and the Broom Center, the reputation of the Broom Center, their engagement regarding their willingness to donate and be involved with future events, and the word of mouth um, intention about the issue of disinformation. Our qualitative research included conducting three separate surveys with media professionals in Southern California. This is really important so that we could determine what would bring media professionals such as themselves to an event like ours. We also conducted a competitor analysis to see what strategies and tactics similar and successful organizations were using so that we too could perform at a national level. Our quantitative research included sending out two separate surveys. Our pre-event survey was sent out and included different scales used to measure our target audience's initial levels of knowledge, reputation, engagement, and word of mouth. This data was then analyzed using SPSS, which gave us the starting numbers we were able to use to jumpstart this campaign. As you can see, our research methods were carefully chosen to ensure the path we were creating was fully supported. Hi, my name is Paige Biondo. Like Natalie mentioned, we conducted interviews in order to gather information on what affects the interviewee's likelihood of attending a professional development event and what they thought makes one successful. The three main things that all interviewees agreed up were important for a successful event included networking opportunities, a speaker that provides value, and convenience. Knowing there would be other industries in attendance, knowing what the speaker would be talking about beforehand, and having a convenient time and place for the event were all deciding factors in their decision to attend. We then asked the interviewees for recommendations for hosting a successful event. One of these recommendations was having a unique and noteworthy speaker speaking about a refreshing or educational topic. They also suggested the idea of having hands-on activities that they could get involved with. And lastly, making sure to keep the event ticket costs low so more people would be available to attend. We we're able to use these responses in order to help us structure our final campaign. Hi everyone, my name is Melanie Ryder. So as part of our qualitative research, we conducted a competitor analysis to further understand what makes similar organizations successful. We wanted to look at organizations that we'd eventually want the Broom Center to be on par with as they have recognition at a nationwide level. So the competitors were identified as the USC Annenberg Center for Public Relations, Public Relations Society of America, Betsy Plank Center for Leadership and Public Relations, and lastly, the Institute for Public Relations. So in comparison with these organizations, we found that the Broom Center does not host webinars, nor do they offer awards. But what drove the campaign was our initiative to increase awareness of the resources already provided by the Broom Center. The competitors, we saw that they're actively communicating, um, updating their publics with their latest research and their future events through social channels and sending out weekly newsletters. So we found that the Broom Center could expand its reach through using its social channels as well to get the word out about our future event. So with this in mind, we focus energy on dropping social posts for both Instagram and Twitter. Hi there, Cassie DiBartolo, research lead. Our pre-event pre survey demonstrated a positive correlation between professionals who have attended a Broom Center event and their levels of awareness, word of mouth intention, and knowledge regarding the Broom Center reputation, missions, and its programs and resources. This proves that these center lectures are helpful in increasing the Broom Center reputation and worth the cost. Respondents from San Diego showed the highest levels of knowledge and reputation regarding the Broom Center, while those from the Los Angeles area showed the lowest. We found a significant correlation between professionals who have attended a center lecture in the past and their attitude toward the Broom Center. This information shows us that lectures are valuable in increasing the overall reputation of the Broom Center. Respondents reported an overall low level of likelihood to donate, but the survey showed that respondents had a moderate to high level of word of mouth intention, which shows that the media professionals are willing to talk positively about the Broom Center with their friends, their peers, and their coworkers even. Respondents overall felt strongly regarding the topic of misinformation in the news and how it impacts their profession. 
Combined, these results helped our team to set a baseline to evaluate our success of the third annual center lecture that will later compare to our post-event survey results. Hi, my name is Sabrina Baserto. Our team evaluated the Broom Center's strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats in order to jumpstart our campaign. Some of the Broom Center's strengths include the annual center lecture series hosted by the Broom Center and the Broom Student Fellows Program that was initiated at the start of this year and sets the Broom Center apart from its competitors. Its weaknesses include a limited social media presence, a limited budget, and no physical space for people to meet up. Some of the Broom Center's opportunities include Dr. Broom's legacy. We really wanted to perpetuate Dr. Broom's legacy after learning from last year's Broom Initiative campaign that his influence on others is a major factor in garnering support in all center-related activities. The center also has the trust of survey respondents who say they care to learn more about what the Broom Center has to offer. Another opportunity is that it can network, I mean, it can target uh, Southern California professionals who are seeking networking opportunities. And lastly, we learned from our research that past event attendees have a higher knowledge of the Broom Center. This is an opportunity because we can use this knowledge to generate more word of mouth among media professionals. A lack of media coverage, of external media coverage, pr promotion, and awareness beyond San Diego pose a threat to the Broom Center. Other threats include centers with higher awareness levels and centers with more resources to host events, networking opportunities, and webinars. From the start of our campaign, our team faced the growing threat of COVID-19, but it wasn't until a week before the event actually happened that we were forced to confront this threat head on. In fact, a day after the event, March 11th, the World Health Organization officially declared the, the coronavirus to be a global pandemic. Still, we used, uh, we leveraged the Broom Center's strengths and opportunities to overcome this obstacle and to successfully implement our campaign. Hello, my name is Taylor Webster and I'm the team's HR manager. While the Broom Center is devoted to investing in growing public relations professionals through its resources offered, it has not yet reached its full potential of awareness among its target audience. Through analyzing our pre-event surveys and quantitative research, we found that respondents overall showed a moderate level of knowledge of Dr. Glenn Broom. However, they lacked awareness of the Broom Center, its mission, and its resources. Because of this, media professionals in San Diego and the surrounding regions are not attending the Allen H. Center Distinguished Lectures in Public Relations. Despite having a low starting point, it was advantageous to our campaign because it could only go up. Our pre-event research findings indicate that previous attendees of Broom Center events show the highest level of knowledge of both Dr. Glenn Broom and the Broom Center. Therefore, we implemented strategies and tactics to increase audience awareness of the center and attendance to its events, including this year's third annual center lecture. Hi everyone, my name is Erendira Ibarra. The Broom Center's focus is to enhance the profession by encouraging professionals and educators to invest in the industry and themselves. Our campaign targeted San Diego media professionals who we consider to be our publics to continue growing local relationships and increase word of mouth engagement and possible donations to the center. PR practitioners and journalists alike were targeted to creative and official networking experience at the center's lecture. We also targeted SDSU GMS students because they are the forefront of our efforts and they were late in publics. The cultivation and development of students is a priority of the center, and this is why we aim to increase the students' involvement. It is important for the center to build and maintain relationships with them throughout their careers because they are our future media professionals. Our last target audience were SDSU GMS on tenure and senior faculty members. They were considered our publics and we targeted them to continue to guide them in their paths as educators in the industry. We believe that increasing their knowledge about the center will guide them to bring information about the center's resources to their students and colleagues at nearby universities. Hi, my name is McKenna Wecker. The overarching goal guiding this entire campaign was to position the Broom Center as a leading resource in professional development with media professionals in the Southern California area. To achieve this goal throughout this campaign, everything we did was in support of our objectives. To raise awareness of the Broom Center by 10% by May of this year, measured by the post-lecture survey. To increase word of mouth advocacy of the Broom Center by 10% by May of this year, evaluated by the post-lecture survey. 
to increase engagement with the Broom Center by 10% by May of this year, evaluated by likelihood to donate. And lastly, to secure 5% of center lecture attendees from the greater Los Angeles area by the day of the event, measured by our attendance records. Hi, my name is Chelsea Heath, and I'm the Messaging and Publicity Lead. Our research laid the foundation for the messaging elements used throughout the campaign. From the information gathered through our interviews and surveys, we were able to determine three overarching themes, cultivating professionals, Allen H. Center, APR, and fellow PRSA, and forging a united front. From our interviews, we discovered media professionals' desires for networking and professional development opportunities when attending events. This led us directly to the theme of cultivating professionals. Dr. Broom was known as the professor of the profession. The Broom Center continues Dr. Broom's legacy of cultivating professionals by investing in the people and the practice Dr. Broom is so passionate about. The Broom Center continues to elevate the practice by supporting students, untenured faculty, and practitioners through resources, funding, and professional development opportunities such as the Center Lecture. Allen H. Center, APR, and fellow PRSA was a vanguard of public relations. He is the man responsible for bringing the practice a seat at the management table. Realizing that public relations needed a foundation in academia, he co-authored what is considered the first public relations textbook. That textbook is found on nearly every practitioner's desk today. Center set the standard for the practice and held himself to that same standard. When accreditation became available, he made sure to take the opportunity. He was a founder and funder and a local member of our San Diego PRSA chapter. Center is the only person at SDSU to hold the title of Distinguished Lecturer, after which the lecture series is named. This year's topic is disinformation, and we knew that we needed a topic that was relevant to both sides of the media profession. Originally, we determined the theme of a united front to tie in the military commonalities between center and keynote speaker John Kirby. However, when listening to our interviews, we also heard the word solidarity. The center lecture is an opportunity for journalists and public relations practitioners to join together in solidarity. Together, we are forging a united front to face our common enemy to face our common enemy. The media is not the problem. Disinformation has infiltrated our industry, but united, we will learn how to fight for the truth. Hello, my name is Annie Tong. Our primary engagement channel is social media. Since Twitter is popular among PR practitioners and reporters, we decided to set up an account for the Broom Center so it can join trending conversations and engage with professionals beyond San Diego. We were also active on Instagram throughout the campaign period. Besides continuing using hashtags from previous campaigns, we also implemented some new hashtags like truth still matters and combat disinformation to initiate conversations about disinformation and the topic's importance in the current media landscape. We had two interactive activities to engage with our attendees during the event day. One was called the Battle Station where we created an open dialogue with our attendees about this information. Each group with a mix of journalists, PR practitioners, and students during this activity would share their answer in the end to the question, how can we battle this information together? Another effective interaction was that we had a standing grid where attendees would write the response to the question, how do you combat this information, on a doc tag with a key that resemble a center artifact, and then we would hand that tag with the response on the grid. This activity did not only engage the attendees who participated, but also promoted our brand for the Broom Center. Hi, I'm Becca Lopez. We worked hard on our outreach, securing a lot of publicity and promotion leading up to our event. We had a blog post written by a member of our team that was posted on the Broom Center website explaining more about our event, the speaker, and the topic that he would be discussing, which was a great resource for anyone who saw the promotion of our event that we placed in the calendars of multiple big publications such as San Diego Union Tribune, San Diego Reader, KPBS, and Associated Students at SDSU. Stories were written and published prior to our event on SDSU's Professional Studies and Fine Arts website and in the Times of San Diego, as well as being featured in SDSU's State Up to Date and the School of JMS newsletters. These features were a great accomplishment in our campaign because we saw acknowledgement of the Broom Center and its resources from our target audience, who also provided a lot of social media coverage on Twitter, encouraging their followers to attend our event from San Diego SPJ, SDSU's chapter of SPJ, local PRSA, which includes San Diego and Imperial County, SDPR New Pros, and SDSU's chapter of PRSSA. At our event, we had a Snapchat filter for attendees to use that encouraged engagement with our organization, with 1.5 
thousand views, this filter was successful in fostering brand recognition for the Broom Center. But one of our most successful promotional tactics was having a digital billboard that is run through SDSU and reaches an incredibly wide audience due to its prime location sitting outside SDSU's campus overlooking the I-8 freeway. This promoted the event while also promoting the Broom Center itself with a message guiding people to our website. This message ran for two weeks prior to our event and reached over 3 million cars, one of which held a high school student that saw the billboard and thought it looked interesting. He wanted to know more about it. He decided, you know what, I want to go to that event because what are the chances I saw that exact side of the billboard while driving on the freeway? He saw the opportunity to expand his knowledge and took the leap that led him to our event. This is really important to us and to our campaign because it highlights the main purpose of the Broom Center, which is helping new PR pros learn and grow, making them their best professional. I'm Paula Niederlands and I'm the logistics lead for our campaign. Our campaign was centered on hosting the third annual Allen H. Center Distinguished Lecture in Public Relations on March 10th just nine days before Governor Newsom ordered a statewide lockdown. We secured former Navy Chief of Information and CNN analyst John Kirby as our keynote speaker, and everything had gone smoothly with our research and planning phases, and more than 100 PR practitioners, journalists, and students RSVP to our event. We were at the point of witnessing our goal, objectives, and tactics come to life, and this was also the point in time where news about COVID-19 was gaining more and more traction, but nowhere near the height of seriousness it's at now. Now, What's the worst possible thing that can happen when you're ready to host an event of the scale? The national level keynote speaker has to cancel one week before the event. And that's just what happened after CNN imposed its COVID-19 travel ban. And from that moment on, our campaign turned into full on crisis communication. But instead of canceling the event, we re-strategized and salvaged the event and made all the money we spent on everything worth it. The topic of the center lecture was disinformation, and we specifically picked that because we saw that it was a hot topic. In fact, according to Cision, 59% of journalists believe that the public lost trust in them. And so that's why disinformation is such an important topic to media related professionals. And even though our keynote speaker couldn't physically attend, the quality of our event didn't change in the slightest. So with all this in mind, we wanted to go above and beyond to make the event a memorable experience for everyone who attended. To do this, we put together the Center Collection and the How Do You Combat Disinformation activities in order to make the event more interactive. The Center Collection showcased Allen Center's awards and the many editions, some in different languages, of the effective public relations textbook he co-authored. As they walked through the exhibit, participants caught a glimpse into Center's busy traveling schedule, they read poems written to him by former coworkers, and they even got to hear him speak in a recording of one of his speeches. During the How Do You Combat Disinformation interactive activity, participants wrote down their method of filtering out fake news in order to unlock the truth. This activity involved writing down a tactic on a tag to be shared with other attendees. Some tactics shared with us include to reference credible sources, to fact check, and to correct any misinformation you see. With both activities, we really wanted to spark knowledge about the topic of disinformation, the Broom Center, the Center Lecture Series, and just the public relations profession in general to everyone who attended. Because coronavirus wouldn't let John Kirby physically be there, he recorded a personalized in-studio video about disinformation, which is incredibly relevant in the era we're living through today. Here's a clip from his lecture that we'd like to show you. That consumers and purveyors of news and information must prove willing to change the way we absorb and interpret that news and information. And until we do, no amount of legislation, regulation, or cyber defenses are going to save us from the perils of disinformation. We listened to our survey respondents when they told us what they wanted to see in a professional event, and they wanted networking opportunities and interactive experiences. And just because Kirby couldn't be at the event in person didn't mean we would let attendees lose that personal connection with the guest speaker. So we hosted a live Q&A session with John Kirby over Zoom where attendees could volunteer and ask questions as a follow up to his speech. They asked questions about his career path and other ways we can all fight misinformation. Also, the PR practitioners who took the survey during our research phase said they wanted to network with journalists. And to give them that, we strategically assigned a journalist at every table during check-in, 
without attendees even realizing that we were doing this. As part of our crisis communication plan, we came up with our new tactic, which we called battle stations. Each of the 12 tables at the lecture became a battle station team after the Q&A, and we gave instructions to each team to discuss actionable ways to combat disinformation. Then, each battle station presented their idea to fight disinformation, but the catch was that no team was allowed to repeat an idea that was already said. And so by the end of the event, attendees left with more than 12 unique ways to fight disinformation at the individual level, and that was in addition to the ideas Kirby presented in his lecture. Some examples our battle stations came up with were using an online database to check the reliability of a source and making sure information is true before passing it along to others. That one's really important. And so throughout our event, we had our photographer and videographer take pictures and capture footage. We even got a few testimonials from attendees at the event. So I could tell you how great our event is, but I'd rather you hear it from one of our attendees. Our generation a lot um, using technology we're digital natives, we understand social media, but for people who might not understand social media and it's completely foreign to them, it's a lot easier for them to be targeted by these um, disinformation bots and um, companies. So I think it's important that we understand what uh, target publics these bots and disinformation agencies are looking at so that we can help combat it better in the future. Hi, my name is Lexi Howder and I was the graphics and design lead. So at the center of our campaign was the implementation of a united brand identity to ensure that our brand was recognizable and memorable to our audience. For the Broom Center brand, we use the colors red, black, and white. And for the center lecture, lecture itself, the Broom Center adopted an edgier brand aesthetic to match the event topic of disinformation. And this consisted of black and white newspaper-esque design and cable color bars. So at the event, every attendee was given a Broom Center name tag and an event program upon arrival. All staff members were equipped with Broom Center t-shirts that read the truth still matters with the hashtag igniting initiative. In addition, we handed out disinformation first aid kits, also known as defacts, to attendees at our center lecture. These bags included notepads, printed facts about disinformation and expert solutions, a metal coffee traveler, and protein bars, MREs, a meal ready to eat, all inside of Broom Initiative bags, all equipped with Broom Center messaging. Our event tables were also labeled by Broom Center table toppers, while other various branded materials were given away at the event, including notebooks, water bottles, coffee tumblers, and tote bags, all giving our audience visual connections to the Broom Center. Hi, my name is Jillian Kopp. We conducted a post-event survey to allow us to understand how our attendees felt about the event. We also secured coverage in Platform Magazine, Times of San Diego, and ABC 10 11 p.m. news. The most unique part of our coverage was definitely from Platform Magazine. Why? Because it's owned by the Betsy Flink Center, which is a direct competitor of the Broom Center. So that was pretty cool. We also noticed during the event alone, there was 14 posts of our event. 65% of these posts included our own branded hashtags. We also created a Twitter account to better target media professionals. And we noticed on our Instagram, there was an increased ratio of likes and followers. We saw promising results when comparing our post-survey data from the third annual center lecture to those from the pre-survey data who may or may not have enough knowledge about the Broom Center. From this, we saw a 103% increase in awareness of the Broom Center and its legacy. Wow, let me tell you. Not only does this apply to the success of our event, but it also shows how we use the event to reach wider audiences farther than San Diego and spread awareness of all things Broom Center. We also found an 85% increase in knowledge of its resources and programs and a 60% increase in Dr. Broom himself. This shows that those who attend the events are gathering more information about the Broom Center than those who maybe did not attend. There was a 35% increase in word of mouth intention from those who attended the lecture, which means that providing these experiences like the center lecture will encourage people to talk to their peers and coworkers more about the Broom Center. A 33% increase in likelihood to donate to the Broom Center was reported, which helps to keep the Broom Center alive and able to do, produce more events like the Center Lecture and resources to young professionals in the future. In addition to these findings, we also found significant increases in results related to reputation and issue involvement. We saw a 30% increase in the Broom Center reputation after the event, which helps keep a positive legacy surrounding the Broom Center. These post-event results also showed a 14% increase in the agreement 
of the importance of the topic of disinformation, and that speaks to how these events held by the Broom Center are further educating professionals on topics relevant to their industry. As you can see, our largest increase from those who attended the event was the 103% increase in awareness. With these results combined, we can help further increase the Broom Center legacy throughout Southern California. We were really successful in increasing awareness of the Broom Center within the media community by 103% from our original goal of 10%, which is an incredible feat for our campaign that made sure professionals in Southern California are more informed and familiar with the Broom Center, its programs, and its legacy. And if that's not exciting enough, we also expanded the legacy and reputation of Dr. Glenn Broom himself, who is the sole reason we're able to achieve these great accomplishments for such an amazing organization. We are so happy to say we exceeded our first objective of raising awareness of the Broom Center. We were able to maintain and increase positive reputation of the Broom Center and its programs by 35% from our original goal of 10% and ensure that attendees will speak positively about our organization. Increasing word of mouth advocacy of the Broom Center by this amount helped us exceed our second objective. We are able to remarkably increase engagement with the Broom Center by starting a successful Twitter account for the organization and maintaining a constant flow of content throughout the duration of our campaign for both Twitter and Instagram, fostering interactions with our followers. We measured the donation likelihood of event attendees, which is absolutely crucial to our campaign so we can assure continuity of not only current Broom Center events and resources, but also any new events we're able to introduce in the future. And we are so happy to have increased engagement with the Broom Center by 33% from our original goal of 10%, which exceeded our third objective. We were also successful in our ability to spread awareness of the Broom Center and the event beyond the San Diego area. Despite barriers we faced the day of our event, such as bad weather and the beginning of a worldwide pandemic, we were able to secure 5% of our guests from outside the San Diego area. This is an incredible number considering all the derailments we faced, and we are so proud of the amount of guests we were able to reach our fourth objective. Hello everyone, my name is Carla Platero. Based on our campaign evaluations, we design recommendations to ensure that the center continues to grow and expand its reach. Creating quarterly newsletters to distribute to past center lecture attendees will help continue nurturing relationships. These newsletters will also allow knowledge of the center to increase through word of mouth engagement. Spearheading networking events in conjunction with the Public Relations Society of America is another opportunity to represent the center externally throughout Southern California. These events will ignite shared knowledge, increase engagement, and build postgraduate opportunities for young professionals. Lastly, inaugurating a regularly scheduled Broom Center Speaker Series on campus would give students, untenured faculty, and media professionals alike a chance to gather for professional training sessions. This is a more cost-efficient route that will help solidify the center as an on and off-campus entity. Hi everyone, my name is George Berger. The total budget for our campaign was $5,000. Of that, we ended up using $3,409.16. On top of that, we also received an estimated $5,100 worth of in-kind donations from our campus and community connections, which included our photography and videography services. Now that means our team was able to put on an event worth over $8,500 for just a little bit over 3,400 out of our own budget. Now I know what you may be thinking, how did they manage that? Well, we took the values of the Broom Center um, with us in all parts of our campaign and we used our initiative and our grit to secure those donations that were ultimately essential to the success campaign. While we look back at all we have accomplished and the hurdles we have overcome, it's very meaningful to us as a group that our biggest professional development experience to date being this campaign was to create professional development for other people, which emphasizes the Broom Center's mission to improve the profession and push the status quo. Dr. Betty Broom, wife of Glenn M. Broom, explained that he always loved the internship program because he felt like everybody grew through that semester at SDSU. And we can definitely say that this campaign was a growing experience for us as PR practitioners, not only being the class of 2020 crisis communication queens, but now being able to have the opportunity to represent a center that is in honor of the legacy that is Dr. Broom. We will continue to push in order to make an impact on the public relations community. Thank you from the class of 2020. We are ready for you when you're ready for us. And I would now like to open up the Zoom for any questions that you guys may have. Excellent. Thank you very much, Alexis. Um